Welcome to this video. My name is Taylor Ventrude, and we're going to be talking about OKRs, objectives, and key results. The things they just don't teach you in school, ladies and gentlemen. I wish that this was taught in school. Kind of got my blood boiling when I started learning about this. I was like, what? How can something so amazing, so fundamental for helping you achieve whatever you want to achieve in life, whether you're a musician, a business owner, a construction worker, I don't care what your goal is, a parent, OKRs are fantastic. It's a fantastic goal setting framework that can help you achieve whatever you want to achieve in life. And I thought setting goals was easy, okay? I thought it was easy. OKRs takes it to a whole new level and I'm gonna explain how you can use them hopefully in less than five minutes in this video because companies like Google, one of the most successful companies in the world use this framework and you can use it too. You don't need to be a, the, the, the most successful uh, you know, company on earth. You can just be you, a parent, a musician, a business owner, one employee, a thousand employees, it doesn't matter, you can use it. So it's gonna be an important video because like I said, it's gonna help you achieve your goals, right? And I thought goal setting was easy, but as you'll see in this video, it's actually not that easy. And for years I thought I knew how to do it, but I didn't. So stick with me, by the end of this video, you'll understand how to set your goals. You'll be much more likely to achieve them. Let's begin. So before we get into this presentation, this video is actually recommended and inspired by Jens in one of his comments in the previous videos that we made. If you have video recommendations from the future, let me know in the comment section below. I may just make a video on the topic that you suggest. Please give me some feedback. So OKRs in less than five minutes. Here's what we're gonna cover. What is the difference between objectives and key results and key action slash lead measures? There's these three important things that you need to understand with OKRs. We're gonna cover each of them and the differences between each of them. How we use Trello in our company, Better AMS, to organize our OKRs. You don't have to use Trello, we just use Trello. It's a free software. There's a lot of OKR softwares out there that look great, but it's kind of like shiny object syndrome. I, would, I wouldn't go there when you're starting out, just keep it simple. Real example of our OKR for this quarter that we're, we're using, I'm gonna give you some real examples, and then when our team actually syncs up on our OKRs, how do we actually communicate OKRs amongst each other? We have a small 10-person uh, team, I think a 10 or 12-person team. How do we actually do that? So. Here's the objective. The objective is really where are you going, okay? It's the statement that inspires action and it's tied to your mission or your vision. Very simple, now I'm gonna give you a real example coming up here, but first, let's go over the key result. A key result is how you will actually measure progress towards your objective, okay? So this is like your measuring stick, right? It's the feedback mechanism, it's, it tells you whether or not you are getting closer to achieving the objective. That's the key result. Now I'm gonna give you examples here in a second, just stay with me. And the key action, otherwise known as the initiative, otherwise known as the lead measure, is basically what can you actually do to achieve those key results. Thus, by achieving those key results, you'll achieve the objective, okay? So there's this, this cadence here. Objective, key results, key action. Um, starts with objective, then key result, then, then key action, or initiative slash lead measure. So, the key action is basically the actual work that you're gonna be doing to get the key results achieved. So here's a real example of an OKR that we had set um, for a four month time frame, and the objective is to build a bulletproof billing system, okay? It basically how we bill our clients and our agency. Two of the key results, one of them is greater than 95% paid by the 21st of the month. So our billing, our invoices get sent out on the, on the 1st and the 7th of every single month for all our clients, except like one or two. And our goal is to get 95% of all invoices paid by the 21st of the month. And that's actually a pretty challenging thing, at least in our agency, uh, because not all of our clients are set up on auto pay or Stripe. Some of them wanna pay via wire transfer, et cetera. Another key result is 80% of our clients that pay via credit card, we wanna get them on an auto authorization so we can just process our credit card without them, basically, because that'll really improve the billing. So those are two key results that will help us build a bulletproof billing system. Now notice how the objective doesn't really, it's kind of a joke, like a bulletproof billing system, it doesn't really make much sense when you read that, it doesn't matter. The objective, again, is to, it's basically a statement that will inspire action and it's tied to your vision and your mission. Our vision is to be the most people-centric company on earth, to be the most people centric, we obviously need to get paid so that we can pay our team. So cash flow is super important. It's pretty much just like the, the, the blood of your business. Now, some of the initiatives or the key actions that will help us achieve getting 95% paid by the 21st of the month is, some, for some examples, we, we created an e-signature authorization form. So instead of a client having to print out a piece of paper, write out their credit card, write out their name, and then sign it, we just built, we just transferred that into, transformed that into like an e-signature form so they don't have to print it out. And it basically just increases the efficiency and the ease that it takes them to fill out that form. 
And we also did a bunch of other things. These are all, all these little things that are crossed off are examples of things that we did that are gonna help us get to 95% paid by the 21st of the month. So let's actually just break this down a little bit more now that you've kind of seen an example. So the objective, again, where are you going? Inspirational, not, it does not contain a metric. This is where kind of John Dewar in, in, in the Measure What Matters book, I, I, after doing a lot of research on OKRs, kind of disagree. They pretty much state, I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive they state that an objective can have a metric or a number in it. I mean, one of Google uh, Google's companies, which is YouTube, their goal was to basically hit a billion views a day, I think it was, or a billion minutes watched every day. I don't know what the, the goal was, but that was one of their objectives. I don't like having a metric in the objective. It depends. You don't. It, there's no black or white. A lot of people use OKRs differently. I don't like to have a metric, okay? That's me. You may find somebody else that tells you something different. Now, the other thing is that it derives from your vision, super important, and should have. Uh, you should only have a, a few per time frame. So most people do OKRs in a quarterly basis. I like that. I think that makes the most sense. Um, but whatever you're doing, if you're doing OKRs and you're using it throughout the quarter, I don't recommend having more than like two to three, at most four uh, OKRs. It's it, it's actually a lot to have more than three. Um, and then the example of an objective here is a bulletproof billing system. That's the example that we have below here. So moving on to the key result, a few things that describe the key result is it's an outcome that you need to achieve. Okay, it's an outcome which means that it's outside of your circle of influence, okay? The fact that we want to get 95% paid by the 21st of the month, I can't influence that. Like, I can't control that. That is outside of my, you know, control. There are certain things I can do that, that, that may be able to help me get there, but that goes into the key actions, which we'll get to in just a sec. So it's outside of my circle of influence. It derives from my vision. It always contains a metric. This is super important. Key results always need to contain a metric. If you don't have a number, how in the world are you going to measure it? Now, I know you might, you might be thinking, you might be thinking, well, how do I measure something that's subjective, right? It's very easy to measure billing because it's objective. It's like 95% paid. We're talking about numbers. It's accounting. You can measure it. It's very easy. What about like employee happiness? How do you measure like the happiness of your team in your agency? Well, thankfully there's surveys and those surveys have numbers attached to them. So believe it or not, there is a way to measure everything, even the subjective things in this world, such as client satisfaction. There's surveys, it's called um, net promoter score and there's surveys that show you what your net promoter score is. So you can always create numbers and, and, and formulas around subjective things that you think you can't measure. Just do your research, you, you can measure it, okay? so. Moving forward here, uh, it's essentially a KPI with a target. A lot of people get key results and KPIs confused. They're very much the same thing. The only difference is that a key result has a target. KPIs sometimes don't really have targets. They're more or less just key performance indicators to let you know the health of your business, right? It's kind of like on the dashboard of your car. You can see that the engine or the uh, the heat of the engine, is, or I don't know if it's the oil or whatever it is, it's right in the middle. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's perfectly in the middle. Uh, there's not really a target. I mean, if you if you had a target there, it would be like the middle, not too hot, not too cold. But it's essentially a KPI with a target. So our two our two key results in this example were 95% paid, and 80% of our clients that pay via credit card get them on an auto authorization form, get them to sign that, so we can basically pay, you know, bill them them without them. That's pretty much the key results there. So key action is slash initiative slash lead measure. Why do I have these three different names here? Initiatives is what some people call them. Other people call them lead measures. If you've read like the 40X framework uh, for getting stuff done, uh, there's other books like uh, Getting Things Done, GTM, GTD by, I forget the guy who wrote that book. I've read a lot of these different books. There's The Big Hairy Audacious Goal by Scaling Up. I think that, that's the book that talks about it. There's The One Thing. The One Thing is a great book by Gary Keller. There's so many different goal setting framework books that you can read out there. I, I, it, go do whatever one you think is best. I like OKRs, which is why I'm making this video about it, okay? So key actions, uh, what, what can you do to get there? These are things that are actually inside your circle of influence that will help move the needle on your key results, okay? This is super important. So this is how you're actually, like I said, gonna move the needle. So how am I gonna get 95% paid by the 21st of the month when on average right now it's only 50%? Well we could build an e-signature credit card authorization form. It makes it easier for new clients to onboard. It's gonna help the, the billing, uh, the speed of uh, accounts receivable and billing 
for new clients. And also it'll help increase the likelihood of a client being willing to give us a credit card authorization form and sign that form because it's so much easier to sign it. We're gonna enforce late fees. This is something we'll do because we, we haven't really ever enforced late fees even though we have it in our contract. Now we'll start enforcing late fees which will help in increase the you know percentage paid by the 21st of the month. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, offer Amex because we, we, didn't, we, we don't have that but now we can offer our clients the ability to pay through uh, I think Amex stands for, stands for American Express. And there's a bunch of other stuff that we're gonna do. These are all key actions that if we do them, we are betting that it will help us get towards 95% pay, okay? So here is our OKR framework in Trello. So it, it looks like a lot, stick with me, I'm gonna explain it. So in our vision, in our mission, our vision is to build the most people-centric company on earth. Our mission is basically how we're gonna achieve that, which is we are gonna be focusing on providing the best experience, the utmost efficiency, and the greatest results. And then there's also MRR growth. So these are kind of the four different sectors or categories that we place OKRs within. This is the actual OKR here. This is the objective, bulletproof billing, these are the key results, and these are the key actions and the initiative. So, the time frame is also here. Now, this is a four-month time frame. That's because we actually started OKRs on July 1st. Very recent. We, we're, we're new to this process, but I really like it. Um, and this is kind of how we structure them. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We use the checklist where we put the initiatives, otherwise known as the key actions. And then uh, we have the key results here, and we have the objectives here. Okay. So And then we have the members, whoever is managing this done here. So. Then we have off track, on track. So if, if you're off track, uh, you would label this, you know, off track. If you're on track, you label it on track. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, the sectors that we have is really important. And the book doesn't measure what matters, doesn't talk about this. Uh, Andy Grove doesn't talk about this. John Dewar doesn't talk about this. Nobody really talks about this except one guy and he subtly mentions it, mentions it in, in, in a bunch of videos. That guy is Jeff Bezos, okay? He talks about how every business should have two to three battles that they're trying to win. Basically, two to three really important things that they can focus on that will never change, and if they accomplish those two to three things, they'll essentially be one of the best companies in the world. Now, Amazon, those three things that Jeff Bezos focuses on and has focused on since 1997 or 1996, whenever Amazon started, is fastest shipping, cheapest prices, and, and widest selection, okay? So I'm gonna say that one more time. Fastest shipping, uh, cheapest prices, and widest selection. I believe those are the three things. They've obviously added on a lot of, a lot, a lot of new things as time has gone on, but Jeff Bezos, really smart guy, obviously the richest man in the world, I think it is right now, but he says, you know, I think about those three things, I think to myself, when would a customer ever want slower shipping? When would they ever want uh, more expensive products, like more expensive prices? And when would they ever want a store that doesn't have you know, products that they want? They're always gonna want more products. They're always gonna want cheaper prices. They're always gonna want faster shipping. So those are the three things that we focus on. Now they actually achieved that, and because they achieved it, they are one of the most, they are the most successful company on earth, and he's the richest guy in the world. So we said, okay, it's difficult for us to get super measurable specific things like like Jeff Bezos has on Amazon. Uh, we decided best experience was gonna be very experiential and subjective to the client's happiness and the people within our company's happiness. And there's different ways that we can measure that through uh, net promoter score and surveys. Utmost efficiency is defined to be basically more or less just uh, the, 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 the throughput of our system. So we don't, we wanna make sure that Everything is as efficient as possible. Our account executives, our account managers don't need to be doing monotonous stuff. And uh, essentially this will dictate our profit margin percentages in the agency. Then you have greatest results, which is the client results that we are getting and uh, how much are we growing their business. We still haven't really clearly defined the metric of this because it's difficult to measure it. But essentially this is the growth of our client's business because that's what we help them do. We're an advertising agency right now. We're helping them grow their business and that's the main goal of why they pay us, okay? And then there's the final sector, which is MRR growth. This is related to growing our actual agency and MRR because these three sect sectors here don't really, we don't really define them as sales and marketing for getting new clients, okay? So then we have 2020, which is evolved into a baby giant, uh, greater than 70% retention rate, that's what we're measuring, best experience. Utmost efficiency is measured to be greater than 35% profit margin. 
greatest results. We don't have a metric for that. And uh, MRR growth, our, our goal this year is to close out the year averaging greater than 100K per month. Right now, I think last month we did about 83, 84,000. We're on track to hit that goal, which is fantastic. Um, and this is, then we have 2023, 2030, et cetera. And this is basically just our, our, our framework for OKRs, okay? So I recommend you structure it like this. This is just how my brain works. This is how I found the easiest way to structure the OKRs. And I wish you the best in structuring your OKRs. It took me quite some time to figure out how to structure this. But to be frank, um, this is how we are structuring our OKRs, okay, in Trello. Now, when our team syncs up on OKRs, we pretty much just have a, a, a call once once a week on Mondays, and it's basically a stand-up meeting where we, we go through the OKRs, and I'll talk about my OKRs or my part in the OKRs. Sometimes you get on multiple people on one OKR, and I'll just say, hey, this is on track, this is off track, that's it. If it's off track, I'll explain why, and if I need something from someone that's holding me back, I will make sure to communicate that in the phone call, okay? so. At a high level, that is OKRs in a nutshell. I know that, that I could go way deeper, but I want to keep this as quick and succinct as possible. Now, I'm assuming I went way over five minutes, but if you stuck with me to the end, I hope that this was helpful. And if you have questions, put them in the comment section below so I can definitely answer them for you. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us boost the algorithm. I should, I should show you guys the stats on the YouTube channel. They are going through the roof. Uh, that Sam Ovens video I released recently is doing really well and just a lot of videos are starting to pick up So I really appreciate all the support that you guys are giving hitting that subscribe button hitting the notification bell hitting the like button Commenting all those things help boost the algorithm help grow the channel help more people and help us create more better videos So thanks for watching this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you have future video recommendations Send it to me. This video was inspired by Jens and uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this. I hope you found some value. Ciao